Now, I, I give you guys two assignments. The first to find the spectrum of the uh, uh, the spectrum, and the second to find the uh, uh, single value to check that this this thing was single value. And the thing with the spectrum was to check that uh, you could have a, that the spectrum formula was consistent because using the fact that NL and NR were integers, the thing with the single value this was to check that there was that it was single value. Okay. Um, uh, I'm I, I, I presume we've all done the assignment except Oranamko and Shivaji. So I'll do it on the back one with your head. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, let us now remember the formula of L0. So L0. Okay, which had to be equal to what? Was equal to now uh, in L. Okay, plus p uh, plus alpha prime p L squared by four because it's this contribution plus. Uh, Minus m squared because plus a uh, minus sorry minus uh, let's write it in steps minus plus alpha prime p i squared by four but p i squared by four is minus m squared because with our sign convention space is positive but that uh, time is negative so this is minus and so this formula becomes uh, m squared is equal to uh, P L squared. Okay, that's right. This uh, four by alpha prime N L plus alpha prime P L squared four minus one. You agree? Okay. But m squared was also equal to 4 by alpha prime in R plus alpha prime P R squared by 4 minus 1. And so we conclude that n L minus n R is equal to alpha prime by 4 P R squared minus P L squared. Do you agree? Yes. Okay? <coughs> now we have a potential problem. And the potential problem stems from the fact that um, uh, this guy is an integer. Whereas this guy looks, you know, PL and PR are far from integers. Some, they depend on R. And nothing that depends on R can be integer. So basically all the R dependence, all the R dependence has to cancel. Okay, otherwise it can't work. Okay. Uh, but you see that that's true because what we want is not PL squared and PR squared, but PL squared minus PR squared. Or PR squared minus PL squared. So PR was of the form A minus B the whole thing squared. PR squared is of the form A minus B the whole thing squared. PL is of the form A plus B the whole thing squared where A is this stuff and B is this stuff. So if you've got, let's write this as in R minus in L is B L squared is B R squared. Yeah. So we've got A plus B the whole thing squared minus A minus B the whole thing squared. That's just 2 AB. That's just a, for, uh, for AB. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Yeah, and now why is that working? Okay, let's see. So, so what what do we have? What we have is, uh, ah, yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. It, it's working for the following reason. Okay, let's let's see. Uh, what we have is now. So this is equal to alpha prime by four into four. That gives the alpha prime. Oh, that gives the four into a b. Now what was a? A was this. So I'm writing in, in matrix rotation. 
G times N by R alpha prime indices are contracted. Okay? And upper and lower always raised by G. So I will even write it. I, I, everything raised by capital G. So N by R plus B W R. Right? And uh, B was R W. Now you see this times this cancels the R. This doesn't, but that's not a problem because B was anti-symmetric. So W B W is zero. Under contraction with this W, this term goes away. Uh, this is alpha prime. Uh, <laughs> alpha prime yeah. Something is wrong, someone is blundered. Uh, because I think 4 by alpha prime is alpha prime by 4. And then there's a 16, sounds very unlikely. Okay, but let's let's be, be careful. See, basically there's four by alpha prime, and there was alpha prime by four, and I forgot the alpha prime by. No, what is alpha prime by four? Yeah, the, the, this whole thing here yeah, was just not there. Huh? No, no, wait, it was. It was alpha prime by four. It was alpha prime by four. You're right, alpha prime by four, and then PL. I I I think uh, I think we. Just compare dimensions. Uh, PR does not have an alpha prime in the GAB, the formula for it. Does it take one? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. One, or, uh, one, 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 one of them should be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. P is just n by R. You're right. This can't be right. This alpha prime can't be there. Yeah. This. Yeah, very good. Uh, Everything is looking suspicious. Oh. Uh, B should be like a momentum, right? Yeah. So it should be one over distance. Uh, one over alpha prime is there. The function speed defines B without the gate. So you are saying that I should have had an alpha prime here, alpha prime here. Ah, probably. Probably we missed the factor of alpha prime. Alpha prime here, and alpha prime. That will show. You see, you see, x dot was alpha prime was alpha prime uh, alpha prime p tau. We probably just read off p as x as x as the coefficient of tau in x, where p is alpha is, has an extra one. That's that. Okay, sounds good. So. You're right, so this is how that went. And uh, uh, so everything here was actually right. Okay, so this had no alpha prime and this had no one over alpha. Okay, excellent. This stuff is just zero. R cancelled. Um, and 4 has cancelled. It's exactly the period. What about this alpha prime? That cancels because of the overall alpha prime that you have added uh, to P. The new alpha prime that you have added. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Only n is one. Yeah. <laughs> Again, to P. No, n to n. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, because there was a one by alpha prime. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this cancels this. Right? So, so sorry. So this alpha prime. Which I can write as now just n omega. Okay. And this what this means is na omega a. Okay. So you say that the level matching condition is not changed by the B field. Okay, it's what it was before. This if you look up your notes. This is the same thing we got before. NR minus NL is equal to NA omega. Good to 
have been changed. If it was going to be consistent, it could have been changed. Right? Because the right hand side is discrete. Yes. Whereas B is continuous. So as you change a continuous knob, a discrete knob can't change if everything's going to change in a continuous manner. Yeah. Okay? So the level of magic condition has to just be automatically satisfied. The B part has to just drop out by itself. If it was going to be a level natural condition, that could have been a bit. Okay? Excellent. Now, we want to... Uh, is this clear? Okay, so this is the spectrum. This is the formula for the spectrum. PL and PR are listed there. And uh, the formula the formula itself is quite complicated because it depends on all this B stuff. Yeah, because the formula involves PL, it involves PR, separately. So only the level matching condition that involves that difference, difference which is simple. Okay? Now, the next thing that we wanted to check was that the OP was also, the OP continued to be single value. Okay. So, uh, how do we do that check? Let's do it a little, a uh, little abstract. So, we have e to the power I P L cell e to the power I P R star. Okay, um, and then we let's say P one. We take this same thing two, and we get the same thing three, which is P one plus P two. Okay. Divided by z to some power and z bar to some power. And we want to com compute those parts. Okay? So we do, do it exactly as we did one or two lectures ago. Um, let's try to remember. Let's see. Our We had xl of z, xl of 0. Was it 2 divided by alpha prime log? Log of set? Can somebody look up? Minus, minus 2 divided by alpha, minus alpha prime, sorry, log of set. Yeah, of course, dimensions. Minus alpha prime by 2 log of set. X is distance, so 2 distance. Okay, fine. So, you remember, uh, you remember the point was that we have this guy normal order and this guy normal order. We want to write that as something completely normal order uh, by that we have the general formulas last time. But the way we remember that was that this, this factor here was simply, was simply, um, e to the power i pl of x of z two point function x of z xl of zero pl and these two got product so minus e to the power minus pl one pl two okay so this factor the z power was simply this and the z power Factor is the 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 Okay, I just need to get the factor right. The way I get the factor right is to get the first term right. Imagine taking the first term here and expanding it. This would be IPL XL. Take the first term here and expand it. That would be IPR XL. So we get a product of IPL XL times IPR XL. So we get a product of IPL times IPR times two point function of XL. XL XL. Okay, well that's exactly what we get when we expand this. So this is the right factor. Okay, I'm just using a cheap trick to avoid remembering the formula. To even do it for you. Okay? So, 
Um, this is the Z dependence and that is similar Z bar dependence. Is this clear? Okay. So now what we get is, but this was minus alpha prime by 2 This was minus alpha prime by 2. Ah, and then there was uh, Oh, 
doing is we are using the AB is A plus B the whole thing squared minus A squared minus B squared by 2. So that by 2 again, this is a 4. But look, this is the same alpha prime by 4 into left squared minus right squared that appear here. Okay? Now, this momentum P1 plus P2 is simply one of these momenta with N replaced by N1 plus N2 and W replaced by M1 plus, I mean M replaced by M1 plus M2. So since this guy was an integer, for every choice of N and W, there is an integer, there is an integer, and this is an integer. With the right alpha prime of 4. And that was all things are integer. Okay. And so, mm, okay. And so, uh, so we conclude that the OPE is singular. Now, that, can you give me a quick interpretation for the fact that the Z to the power was this thing? We could have just written this down in this form. Why? Just for dimensional counting. By dimensional counting. We know that this is the dimension. Alpha prime by 4, P1 plus P2, the whole thing squared, is the left dimension in the OP of the thing that appears on the right hand side. But these are the dimensions of the of the initial guys. And in an OP, if you've got O1, O2, going to O3, you get divided by Z to the power dimension of 3 minus dimension of 1, uh, or whatever, dimension of 1 plus dimension of 2 minus dimension of, of 3. Okay, and that's the structure here. This alpha prime by 4 was the fact that the dimensions were alpha prime ds Okay? So though we worked it out by weak contractions, we could have got the answer just from dimension counting. That's all the same thing. All, all the same thing. Okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's actually working out nicely because we wanted 1 over z to the power, dimension of 1 plus dimension of 2 minus dimension of 3. But we wrote z to the power, and that's why these minus signs. So all our signs are also correct. Okay, excellent. So you see that this guy here appears to be fine. Here everything seems to be, seem to be falling on our feet. We've got a nice spectrum, the spectrum makes sense. We've got the vertex operators are nice OPs, the OP makes sense. There is one more exercise that we have to do. Okay? And that exercise is to check that the partition function is modular. Okay. Now, uh, suppose I ask you guys to check this. So all you have to do is to take the spectrum. The spectrum that we got from here. Okay? All you have to do is to take the spectrum and to sum over, use uh, uh, Poisson resummation and get the answer in the path integral in the form that the path integral would have given it to you. Okay? Um, uh, uh, is it okay if I leave this as an exercise? Will you actually do it? Okay? It's a simple generalization. It's a simple generalization of what we did to many variables. Okay, and I'll be rewording it in a way that that we will uh, talk about it in a while. But I'll leave this exercise. Okay, just to, just to check, and you'll find the thing is indeed modular invariant. And of course, you could have seen right at the beginning by just writing the partition function directly in Euclidean part of the table. That would automatically give you a modular invariant function. So the Poisson base summation just takes the spectrum and converts it into a form that you would have got by doing the Euclidean path integral on the 
Taurus. Yeah, and that is manifest Shiva. But it's a good exercise to check that that was some summation does indeed turn the partition function into the form that you would get from modular uh, from the from the It's just keeping track of the. I mean, just following what we did a couple of lectures ago, looking at that with a few experiments. Okay, now nothing to it. Okay, but I mean, do encourage you to actually do this. Okay. Fine. Now, um, logically speaking, we're done. Okay. Logically speaking, we're done. There's uh, uh, there's a lot of interesting structure. What we want to do is now look for phenomena. So we've got this the, this tori. Uh, we've got lots of moduli to play with. We'll do that counting in just a minute. We've got tori. We've got these moduli to play with, and. Uh, um, uh, we can look to see if something interesting. So we already saw that when we had one circle, something interesting happened that when we took the radius to be the TG band T band. Okay? When you have many more tori and you've got these big fields, you can search for interesting places where new phenomena come. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we're going to do this in great detail uh, when we study the heterotic stream. Okay? Uh, I'm going to postpone this that, this, that, that discussion because we're going to need to do it. That point, but I'll just give you a two-minute flavor, uh, flavor of what you might find. <coughs> um, <coughs> when we had just one circle, um, we found that there was something very special. When we had PLs that were dimension one zero and completely uh, uh, dimension one zero, completely homomorphic. And what was special about that? What was special was that that gave you a current on the world sheet. Okay? Currents on the world sheet corresponded to gauge fields in space time. Having lots of currents on the world sheet, okay, gave you lots of gauge fields in space time. So this was basically a generalization of currents at time. The idea that interesting things in compactification give you enhanced gauge symmetries in space. And what you will see, what, you, what one can see, and what we will see, is that uh, uh, doing this with more directions gives you the prob uh, possibility of getting much bigger gauge groups than SU2. With one circle, all you get was SU2. Okay? What we will see is that, uh, uh, for instance, when you do it on a 16, when you do it with 16 circles, when 16 of your dimensions are compactified, as will be needed for the heterotic string. As most of you know the way I'm studying it, the heterotic string is a string whose world sheet on the left is the bosonic string, on the right is the super string. Um, the bosonic string is 26 dimensions. 16 of these, you just have to do some sort of compactification like this. The other 10 combine up with the 10 of the super string to give you space. So that 16 is toroidally compactified just for length. And as you will see, uh, what we will get is that when you just take just the left movers and you compactify 16 things, there is a point in that moduli space in which, um, in, in, in which the uh, symmetry is either SO32 uh, or E8. Uh, we see lots of lots of big groups coming out when we do this. We study this in great detail when we study the Okay. This will just give you a flavor of the kinds of things that can happen. The two modules, um, this is moduli of the number of my name, which moduli are you talking about? Todas modulum, Todas moduli. Where did I say moduli? Uh, now you say something. Yeah, you just remind me of this. Can you remind me of the sentence? <laughs> I am talking about points on the moduli space, so I will say enhanced symmetry. Ah, this, this is the point of the moduli space of possible, possible allowed toroidal compatibility. Okay. The compact so you'll see as we as we proceed. The kind so you see here in the bosonic string at least what I said is precise. Um, there'll be some things that will freeze things for the heterotic string. But suppose we do sixteen and sixteen and compactified in the bosonic string. Okay. Oh sorry, did I say yeah, it was E eight times E eight or SO thirty eight. Uh, SO thirty two. Sorry, I said uh, in the bosonic string, you see this toroidal compactification 
has many moduli. What does that mean? It has many choices. When we took just one circle, there was just one choice. It's the size of the radius. Okay? When we do, let's say, two circles, how many choices do we have? Can somebody do the counting for me? Two circles. Two circles? Two circles. Okay, tell me. So there's one complex parameter where choosing the complex. So are you saying that the answer in terms of real parameters is two? No, one. Because I think it's one and tau two. Probably. Huh? 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 You see, firstly, we're not interested in the only complex structure. Okay. For instance, when we had a circle, the radius was important. That's not a complex structure. Okay, so we're interested in the full. Okay? But uh, Old Dog, who had he done his counting correctly without throwing away the Taylor structure, would have put three. Three, as Yogesh just tried to explain to us, uh, an easier way to count three is just to count how many, uh, how many GABs there are. GAB was a, a constant, symmetric matrix, the way we did that. I think there was the GAB. But there's one more thing, there's BAB. So there's one. Total of four. Now suppose we have d dimensions compact. How many will we get? D squared. Okay? D squared, Lovely <coughs> uh, got it so fast because he realized that what we're doing is adding all symmetric matrices to all anti symmetric matrices. That's correct, that's the decomposition, but uh, uh, but Lovely got it so fast because he realized that if you take symmetric and anti symmetric matrices, it's just any matrices. Ah. And therefore it's this way. Ah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the total number of possible toroidal compactifications we have are this way. Those are what I was calling moduli. <coughs> the choices in in compactification. Each of these choices will be a massless scalar field in space time. Because corresponding to changing any of these moduli, there is a vertex of and that vertex operator will be 1, 1. Because it corresponds to moving along an exactly conformal flat direction. Okay, just like the changing of the radius of one set. So, from the space time point of view, we will have these square different scales, all of which massless. With flat directions, you go and sit at different points on this flat direction space, you get different physics. What is the physics? It's the physics of that compactification. We have an exact conformal field theory. For every compactification, every one of these these squared compactifications, this whole space of compactifications, so it's space of field theory from, from the two-dimensional point of view, space of vacua from the space-time point of view, is, uh, is what I'm calling body space. Okay? <coughs> Just like when we had one circle, we had special points in moduli space, namely the circle size being alpha prime, square with alpha prime, where we've got enhanced gates. Here we will see that when we have many circles, you have possibility of getting much larger enhanced. Okay? So, uh, uh, why are the compactifications always toroidal? Because I, I, can, I can be very imaginative and choose like a sphere. Then uh, choose, choose something more complicated. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, so how is that ruled out? Uh, choose, uh, and give me an example of what you want to choose. I, I choose two of my directions, x25, x26, and x sphere also. Huh. Now the problem is that those will not be conformal field theories. See, what was special about uh, will not by themselves be conformal field What was special about Torah? To 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 it took a free scalar field theory and performed an orbit fold. Yeah. That's some identification. It didn't take the Lagrangian. I just performed some identification. The free scalar field theory is a conformal field theory two dimensions. So it's, uh, it's all before the identification continues to be. If you take a sphere, then you're changing the local action. Okay? Because your local action now will be G A B B A B This is being changed locally, and now the beta functions for this action may no longer vanish. Other com com complicated identification. That is other. You can choose other comp complicated identification. We are going to study one very soon. It's called the old uh, would you Anything that you can do that is basically some identification by some symmetry group of the, of the original theory that you can, you can choose. Yeah, so there will be some consistency. Okay? 
But something like this requires beta functions to vanish. And again, you can say that GAB has to be flat, and the, the GAB could have to. The, you can only do this when the fields are leading on an alpha prime over Einstein's equations. Yeah. Okay. So basically, any solution of alpha prime uh, of Einstein's equations should, in the end, give you a conformity field. But the problem is that, <coughs> typically speaking, if you've got something complicated, you don't know the exact conformity. You know the conformal field theory at any at some order in alpha prime. Because Einstein's equations are only the conditions for one loop beta functions to vanish. Yeah. The condition of a two loop beta functions to vanish is the correction to Einstein's equation. The three loop, so, and so on. So if you want to do things exactly, you have to have some, have some luck. You have to find the exact solution to this. Okay? All you're doing in the end is searching for the space of conformal field So according to classical space theory, at least without a one to one field theory. Uh, okay. But uh, uh, the space of solutions to the space time equations, the space of two dimensional conformal field theories, would say equals 26. Okay? So what you are doing is searching for the space of, conform of C equals 26 conformal field theories, and now you hit our wall of ignorance. If you have, if, you know, if there had been an analog of whoever, whoever classified the group. Lee no doubt. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, whoever classified Lee groups, okay? The, if somebody had produced a list of all two-dimensional conformal field theories with C equals 26, that would be the space of all vacuum of, of the bosonic string theory. Okay? And then if we could solve all these theories, we would have a spectrum about all, all of these vacuum. It would be fantastic. We can't. You know, our ignorance of quantum field theory is shocking if you think about it. Okay? For 2016. You know, this, there are these big books on conformity theory, these big reviews. You might think we know everything about conformity field theory is in two dimensions. Totally untrue. All conformity field theories with C less than 1 are basically very well understood. Key student conformity. There is C less than one, are very well understood. Okay, great. There's a slightly larger class of conformity theories called rational field theories, which in some sense are very well understood. But conformal field theories with C greater than one in general are not rational. And we know basically nothing about them. Okay? And you see why? This problem should be about as hard, well, it should be much should be harder than finding every solution of Einstein's equations. Which is not going to be an easy problem. Okay, it should be richer than that problem. Okay, so of course you're free. The Rowan's question was, why can't I do something more imaginative than Tori? You're free to do it, but you're stopped by sticking. You don't understand the conformity of the ingredients. That's why in our baby course, we're looking at simple solvable examples. Okay, clear? Okay, there's no doubt that there is a richness of phenomena out there. Okay, great. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Now, So if I choose this to be the unit vector and this, then the lattice is just you know, a square lattice. 
But if I choose this to be the unit vector and this, then I get some k parallelogram type of vector. You understand that, right? Any integer linear combination of two bases unit vector. Now I want to show, I, I, want, I want to explain to you that if we've got, if we compactify in P of our dimension, the way I think we call it C, okay, then the space of vertex operators in these internal dimensions lie on a C, comma C, so two C dimensions. Like this. I'm going to put a comma because there's too many of our elements uh, of this lattice. Like so two C dimensions. Like Okay, and wait, what, 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 what is this? Uh, what is this lattice? Well, you see, suppose I choose n one is equal to one, and everything else is equal to zero. So n in the first direction is one, n in the other direction is zero, and all w's are equal to zero. That generates some momentum, some PL and PL. Okay, then there's another basis vector that I choose, which n2 is equal to 1, all other n0, all w0, and so on. Then I can choose w1 is equal to 1, all n0, all other w is equal to 0. You see, it's clear that there's two c of those, because there are cn's and cw's. Now, the most general momentum is the most general integer specification of n's, and the most general integer specification of w's. But clearly, it can be built out of integer combinations of my basis vectors. That's clear, right? Yes. Because I can write it as n1 times my first basis vector, n2 times my second basis vector, and so on. And then go on to the w's. w1 then 2c plus 1 basis vector. So, and so on. Okay? So, <coughs> in the in some two-dimensional space, okay, in a two-dimensional space, uh, in sorry, a two C-dimensional space, okay, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take this two C-dimensional space whose axes are the C components of PL and the C components of PR. Okay? I've got a lattice in this two C-dimensional space. Is this clear? My basis lattice vectors are the ones I just described. With n1 is equal to 1, all the rest equal to 0, n2 equals 1. Okay? And it's clear that I've got a lattice because all allowed PLPRs are integer multiples of these basis vectors. Is this clear? Okay. Now, see, something appears all the time. Something appears all the time in this lattice, which is the combination alpha prime by 4, pl squared minus pr squared. Okay? So, let us define this, or maybe twice this, let me check which
This product is the usual product, not product class C, but I defined in the range of minus. So, this is simply a standard Euclidean dot product, a Minkowski dot product, but in this case R C comma C. Okay? So this is what I call P1 O P2. I think that's what it which is equal to it. Dot. Uh, maybe O. Ah, O. P1 circle P2 is defined to be this object. Yes, and then with an alpha prime by two. Because we are defining something that will be useful for us, and all our formulas involve p square minus p square. Oh, this just definition. This definition. Okay. That is integer plus y quantity. Ah, that's going to be the point. Okay. So the key point is this: that. P O P one P two was the thing that was this. You see that with the two became this with the four. Okay, this was always an integer. So the first thing that we see is that our lattice is such that the dot product and with this dot product, our lattice is such that the dot product. Of any vector with itself is an integer. Yeah. Now, those of you who are mathematically minded may know that there is a definition of something called a dual. Given any lattice, people are mathematically or solid state physics people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. May know that, that, that anytime people define a. Yeah, exactly. Dual lattice. That's a total lattice. Anytime people define a lattice. This is not the crystals. You define a dual lattice. And the dual lattice is defined as those vectors such that their dot product with any lattice vector is an integer. So what we what we have shown is that the lattice lies within its dual. It's a subset of its dual. Because by definition, the dual lattice is all the set of all vectors such that dot product of this, this guy with any lattice vector is an integer. But we just check that the dot product of any lattice vector with the lattice vector is an integer. Therefore, the lattice lies within the dual. <coughs> maybe equal to the dual, maybe a subset of it. But can't be larger than the dual. Okay? So. Okay, great. Uh, now, uh, the other thing that we have seen is that the dot product of any vector with itself is what? What? No, no, sorry. Integer, no, but that it's a conformal dimension, proportional to the number. No, this was an integer. Dot product of any vector with itself is this times two. Because this is a reference. This by two rather than by four is very important. So why did you define by two? I define it by two because if I want to take this whole thing here, this is p1 plus p2 the whole thing squared, minus p1 squared, minus p2 squared by two. So this is equal to alpha prime by four times p1 plus p2 the whole thing squared, minus p1 squared, minus p2 squared, and then all of those individually were integers. So I defined it by two so that the dot product between any two lattice vectors would be an integer. But that tells me that the dot product between a vector and itself is an even integer. Okay. Now, something I have not proved, but you can check. Okay. It's okay. You can check. Is that this lattice is not just a, a subset of the of, a, of the dual. It actually equals its own. Why can't it just it's in, when the vectors dot I mean the lattice point dotted with themselves give integers? So I can say the dual lattice is the lattice and let me give you a counter example. Okay. Suppose I take the lattice of the real axis huh. with points 0, 2, 4. Okay. The dual lattice is the lattice with 
Half, one, three halves, two. Lattice belongs to the new element. Lattice is not equal to three. Okay? But you can check in this case uh, that the lattice is equal to this. You understand this is a linear algebra problem. You've got the bunch of lattice. I, you can, if you want, just define the dual of every, you know, any, every unit vector. Yeah, so just the vector such that the dot product with uh, with all the other all the other unit vectors is zero, yeah. the dot product with this is one. Yeah. And just check that if all of these basis vectors are lattice vectors, then you're done. Okay, it's a simple but painful to do on the board. Uh, linear algebra problem. Okay, so you can check this, and you will find that it is actually uh, that this lattice is actually its own dual. So this lattice of allowed momentum vectors, okay, is an even self dual lattice. What does even mean? Even means dot product of any vector with itself is an even. Self dual means that this lattice is its own dual. That in particular implies that the dot product of any ve lattice vector with another lattice vector is an even. Okay? So, this set of momenta, of allowed momenta in PL and PR, define an evil, even self dual lattice. Now, let's think a little bit. Let's think a little bit. Why did the lattice have to be even? It had to be even so that level matching was, was an allowed. Why did lattice vectors dotted with themselves have to be integers? Okay? That was needed for the uh, single magnitudes of the OP. And in fact, the first thing implied the same. If a lattice is even, it is automatically a subset of its view. It's automatic that any two dot, product, dot products of any two vectors is an integer just by the manipulation we keep doing the p1 dot p2 is p1, p1 plus p2 the whole thing squared minus p p1 squared minus p2 squared divided by 2 all those were even numbers this okay now why did it have to be self dual it turns out that if you actually ever do that exercise uh, of doing the Poisson resummation you will find that you get a modular invariant function yeah, of course, if you did it with a compact of A and a B, then it'll just work because it wasn't. But if you did it more abstract, that is, you allow the spectrum to be to take values in any lattice. We allow that we ensure that the lattice is even. We ensure that it's a subset of its own dual, of its own dual. But then you do that Poisson resummation thing <coughs> and check that you get uh, an answer that agrees with modular invariance. Then the modular invariance of that uh, of the partition function forces the requirement that it's safe. Okay, actually this is important enough so that uh, we will review this exercise at the beginning of the next class after you guys have all done. Okay, so all of these three conditions have their basis in a simple physics. Even for level matching, subset of dual because single valueness of the OP, <coughs> in fact, that follows from level matching. And self dual for modular invariance. Uh, I'll let you guys try it, and the next class we will briefly go through all that. That's it, the last part works. Okay? Now, I bring this up because um, Narayan. Uh, our friend from ICTP, uh, in, in, in a very famous paper, uh, did the following. He's, he was studying toroidal compactifications of both the Bosan extreme and the extreme. Let's talk about it in the context of the Bosan extreme. And uh, he said, well, you know, up to that point, people had looked at simple toroidal compactifications. Um, and he said, well, let me think of the most general allowed structure 
that comes out of toroid, toroidal like compactifications, that seems to give me a consistent conformity theory. And thinking from this language, basically by requiring level matching, by requiring, uh, by requiring closeness of the OP, and by requiring uh, modular invariants, he came up with the idea that the space of all allowed momenta in this left and right moving vector must be an even self, even self dual like this. Okay? And this seemed like very interesting, very, very abstract. And then Narayan Sam Samadhi and Nuitin wrote a paper a few months later explaining why this was. That the extra moduli that you had not seen were because of the beef. So every even self dual lattice is produced in Sweden in class by canonical quantization of the bosonic stream in the background of const arbitrary constant metric and an arbitrary constant B field. Okay? But this space of compactifications was first discovered. Okay, not by this canonical quantization point of view, but just by asking for, for conformal real theory to land on, on its feet. Okay? So there's two equivalent, way, equivalent ways of thinking. One way is just look at all possible compactifications, you know, all possible this this uh, this lattice of allowed momenta that give you <coughs> conformal field theories that make sense. The second is start from the bosonic string. Turn on constant background fields, do canonical quantization. Both of them give you the same answer. And in fact, historically, that's when, how it was found. The second more abstract way was actually done first and then explained by the canonical quantization way, rather than the route we followed to understand it. Yes, so if, if, if you're demanding it by the second way, which is the conformal, uh, the yeah. conformal theories, then, yeah. then you don't explicitly have level matching, but you only have this. No, I think the conformal field theories as part of still. You want the most general conformal field theory that can be used on the well sheet of the string. So that requires level matching to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, in a way, the level matching condition comes out by this, right? It's all, I mean, it's all, these are not the independent conditions. Ah. Okay. So, Okay, now uh, um, I think that's all I wanted to. Um, oh, le let me just show you. The last thing I want to show you is uh, uh, um, show you is how, from this abstract point of view, uh, you can get the, uh, the number d squared. Okay? So you might ask, how many even self-dual lattices are there? How many inequivalent even, even self-dual lattices are there? Okay? How many inequivalent even self-dual lattices are there in C, C dimensions? Okay? Now, when, when do I call lattices inequivalent? Call them inequivalent, for instance, uh, when they generate string theories with different spectra. Okay, so this is one trivial thing we can do. Given a lattice on, um, uh, given a lattice in RC times RC, we can rotate in this RC and rotate in the other RC. That doesn't change either PL squared or PR squared, so it doesn't change any of our formula. Formulae that will give us essentially identical constructions in string. Okay? But you see the condition that something is even and self dual only depends on the inner product in R C comma C. So we can do more general rotations. We can do those SO C comma C rotations that are not SO C times SO C rotations. Say so I can do rotations in R C comma C that rotate some part of PL into PR. If I have any lattice that that is even and self-dual, 
Because all the even cell curiosity just depends on some inner product. I do this rotation, it doesn't change any inner product. I continue to get an even cell curiosity. <coughs> That's clear? Yes. Okay? So, the space of, uh, of even cell curiosity is minus B SOC, C, multiplied by what? SOC times SOC. Because this is the set of all rotations. And these are the set of trivial rotations. The rotations that don't change any form. Why just rotations? You can also have exchanges between, you can exchange one compact direction with the other. But those will one, be... These, these are discrete kind of things. I'm, I'm looking at the number of continuous parameters in the space of... Yeah. Okay. So now let's do counting. How many elements in SO, C, C? 2C, 2C minus 1 by 2, number of anti-symmetric matrices of dimension 2C. How many elements in C comma C? I mean in SOC. C is C minus 1 by 2. But there are two of these, so I get rid of the by 2. So this should be the total number of day, uh, of content of uh, parameters in the uh, space of even cell tube axis. Okay? So what we what we get? We get 2c squared minus Minus c, right? Minus c squared plus c four c squared. So it will be three c squared. What? Oh, it will be this by two. Yeah. Okay. Minus c plus c cancels, so that gives c squared, which is exactly right. Which is what Yogesh, uh, which was Yogesh and what Yogesh and Dalit told us by by counting g's and b's. Okay. So you see, from this point of view, turning on different g's and b's is a very elegant geometrical thing. All you are doing in this R C comma C is performing a rotation. Physics, if physics only cared about the inner product in R C comma C, this would be a trivial thing. It would be a symmetry of the theory, it wouldn't be changed. But physics doesn't. It cares individually about PL square and PR square. Why does it care individually about PL square and PR square? Level matching only cared about the difference. But the spectrum cared about PR square and PR square separately. Okay? So it's just those just SOC comma C rotations modular all modular the trivial ones as far as physics is concerned. Okay? This gives you the space of any equivalent, uh, the space of any equivalent uh, compactifications of the bosonic string. And uh, for different applications of this of toroidal compactification, this is a value p l square minus p r square. Yes. So it can also boost, right? And that can be a p l square minus p r square. These are these are two boosts. I'm taking the most general S O C comma C rotation. Yeah, but we, the thing that you're modding out is only rotations in the coordinate of one side and another side. I'm modding out by those rotations that preserve p l square and p r square separately. So, the question is which one? With the PS square, PS square separate or with the PS square minus PS square? No, every SOC comma C rotation preserves as a PS square minus PS square. Okay. okay? But the spectrum of the bosonic string depends on PL square and PR square separately. So, those rotations that do not change PL square and PR square do not generate a new string theory. They're there, but they don't generate a new string theory. So, they are trivial. Okay? But those rotations that are change PL square and PR square, but retaining, every rotation retains PL square minus PL square. They generate new string things. Okay? So this is the space of inequivalent string compactifications. Is this clear? Okay, excellent. So, uh, different, uh, different, uh, different calculations in this event performed when studying toroidal compact. If some things it's more convenient to use this way of thinking. It's very elegant and sometimes easier. For some ways, it's more convenient to think of terms of G and B, and it's more visible. Okay, but uh, these are completely, completely good. Okay, excellent. I think that's all I wanted to say about uh, Kuchinsky. By the way, at the end of section four, eight point four, works out. Uh, 
The particular case of two-dimensional compactification is a little more detailed. Okay, fine. That's, that's something that you may want to take into account. I'm not going to look into it. I now want to uh, tell you about orbifolds. So I'm going to be moving on to a slightly new subject. Uh, in line with the question somebody asked, well, what about other, other possible implications? Okay. Uh, but before that, any questions or comments about pure thermal Or negative, yeah. or something. So that means, right? In some, in some step, we are choosing one over the other. In a sense, right? uh, we are choosing. You are saying positive and negative seem different. Yeah. Positive favors. Yeah. Left movers, yes. And uh, uh, that's why you see because it's it's n r minus n n is proportional to n times w. And w has a direction. So if you switch the direction, you switch which one you favor. Okay. Good. Uh, other questions about it? Yeah, sorry about this. Uh, in this case, uh, how is the self reality will increase the symmetry? What? U1 cross U1 to SU2 cross SU2. How will it change? They can have symmetry on the TVM or general number T, 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 C number. What is the most most uh, the biggest possible symmetry? That's what that's the yeah, yeah, way You see, it turns out the biggest possible symmetry is not necessarily even the lattice is rectangular. So by self dual, you might think that we should take the lattice, which is two self dual circles, and that will give you SU. Let's say we're doing two dimensions. That will give you SU2 plus SU2. Very obvious. Mm -hmm. Because all the vertex operators associated with the first guy would be SU2. There's the vertex operators with the second guy would be SU2. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, that is not the best thing you can do. Turns out that in two dimensions, the best thing you can do is SU3, SU3 times SU3. Okay? That requires you to turn on the B field. Thinking in terms of this lattice, there is an elegant way of saying it. But I'm going to postpone the details to uh, when we study the heterotic string. Roughly speaking, are you familiar with the fact that, because I will have to review some Lie group theory. But uh, are you familiar with the fact that the groups are associated with lattices? Given any Lie the group, there are two natural lattices. There's the root lattice and there's the wage lattice. Okay? And roughly speaking, this is what we'll do. If you can choose, um, if you can choose uh, lattice vectors, if you can choose your uh, uh, lattice in the sense of Nara, such that there are lattice vectors, with the right, I have to say more, but lattice vectors uh, that include the root lattice of a, of a liquid, then you will then get that group symmetry. And you understand why, right? Because associated with each vector, there's vertex operator. Now you have to be able to choose it so that the length is right. So that the dimension of that vertex operator will be one comma zero. If so, there will be an element of current type, and will give you a, an enhanced state. Okay. So now the fact that interest the root lattices are not of interesting roots are not rectangular will map to the fact that you to get the most interesting things you will need to turn on these beacons. Will not be these rectangular. We will study this in more detail. Okay, uh, I'll, the the thing that we told you just one thing. The thing that we told you that I explained to you uh, about when we do the heterotic strip. You see, turns out not to be not to be difficult to get even self dual lattices in our C comma C. But when we do the heterotic strip. What we will want is even self dual lattices in R 16, comma 0. Because we have only sorry. Hello? Yes? Ha, I find it. 
Ah, por isso. Ah, nem próprio que é. Changing out to the right point makes it 
length to be the uh, SU2. And the, the, uh, as you say, that, that more complicated, the more complicated version of that is adjusting to, is going to a, a more, more interesting uh, symmetric. Okay? Now, one takeaway lesson is that symmetric enhancements in string theory come from more than Kalutsa clan. You, okay, you can have Kalutsa clan both plus winding modes coming together to give you interesting group structure. It's very good. Okay, excellent. And now, we might need to complete our, our study of compactivity. There's one, one other compactification I wanted to tell you about, uh, which is all of us, and then I wanted to tell you about open strings and uncertainties, which is still a long way to go. Okay, so let's, let's, let's continue. Okay, can I continue? Yeah, right. Some of the modes will be identified. Absolutely. 
Anything else? There's a winding moment, winding moment. This is space. Only the linear part in X that has to be identified. Uh, that will be this condition of the zero part. But what else? There will also always also be a what do we have when we did circles? Momentum right? Momentum that is the angle of this. But we got not triple winding. What was a winding? A winding was a, a was a solution such that a winding was a solution such that when we went around the sigma circle, period x was not periodic, but came back to itself plus two pi r. What was the analog here? Would you ask not to put the circle? No, no. This is a sigma circle, world sheet circle. Here I'm drawing space time. It will come back after 4 pi over. It will go back to minus itself after 2 pi. This is space time. This is the string is always has a sigma circle. Okay? So let's 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 first work this case out. A little detail. Okay, so suppose I have this kind of identification. So, what should I do in my uh, uh, in my expansion? Okay, so we have two two sectors. The first sector is the one in which x comes back to itself as x goes around sigma. The second sector is the one in which x goes back comes to minus itself as x goes to sigma. Okay, so one sector is x of sigma is equal to x of two pi plus sigma. Okay, these are what I call the untwisted sectors. These are the sectors that always exist. But we also have new twisted sectors, which are x of sigma is equal to minus x of sigma plus two pi. Is this clear? Okay. Now, okay. Now let us understand how the quantization of the string, how the quantization of the string. You need the room, Rajiv? No, no, this cake has been not delivered. You said ah, the cake has not been delivered. They just called me to say that there's going to be some delay. It'll come at ten to five. Okay, no problem. Huh, sorry about no, no. So this. In fact, at 4 30, can you call Theo Broma and, and just check that? You know, tell them we have the party at 5. Okay. Uh, just chase that. Yeah. Actually, I think we should basically stop this. Uh, if the key kit doesn't come, it's 2000 rupees. Uh, I need to chase it. But okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, so. Uh, uh, okay, so let me, let me very, very quickly. Okay, so we've got these untwisted sectors and the twisted sectors. Okay, so uh, in the untwisted, okay, now let's first physically see what's happening. Okay, suppose what is what is what is a picture of uh, an un a twisted sector state? So untwisted sector. What I've got is a little string that is looping around here. Okay? It's oscillating, it's doing whatever it wants. But what's happening here is identified a time by what's happening here. But there's another little string doing it whatever it wants here. Is this here? Okay? Locally, this string here is doing whatever it would have done anyway. It's just that there's a mirror image of it at the other end. Is this clear? Okay? Interesting things happen.
happen when you reach here. Okay. Firstly, there will be some condition on basically your wave functions. We'll see that soon. Oh, maybe next time. We'll see that next time. When when the wave functions in this untwisted sectors come near the <coughs> near the origin. However, what is the twisted sector? The twisted sector is a string that starts here. And after 2 pi ends here. Now you see that if you've got a twisted sector that starts here and ends here, if it's that started here, it would have to end here. The further away it is from the origin, the bigger it has to be. Which means that there will be a potential keeping all twisted sector states localized near the origin. Okay? So, physically speaking, we see that what we're going to have are, are these two kinds of states. The first are these untwisted sector states, which are just strings moving around doing whatever they want, with mirror images on the other side of the Okay? But we've also got new set of states localized to there. Okay? Let me do this quantitatively next time. Let me show you the more expansion and show you how the quantization of these strings for next time and add in also the circle direction next time. Uh, okay, and now Shubhaji, uh, next Monday doesn't work for me. Unfortunately, I have to do a sort of uh, something with Rajesh in the afternoon. Uh, so, yeah, we can stop. Yeah. Can I stop? Yeah, we can stop. Um,